So, a lot of people have things figured out in their head. And I am one of those people who likes to speak about the things I have figured out in my head as though I've figured them out and applied them in reality. Most of us know people like that are full of it, so it's time for me to put one of my ideas to test. It's really incredible. The, all of the equipment. I can't believe that you have it here. It's yeah. amazing. And coming in here today, the perilous road <laughs> to come in. It's, that is magic yeah. in, in and of itself, just to be able to get here. I am inspired by the abandon of the believer. Lifting up others in their dreams and the solidarity of faith and the reverence of persistence. I truly believe that I will be the last man standing. Not an easy road, but beautiful and rewarding. All right. Let's see. So have I shown you any of this stuff? I showed you. I showed it to you while I was there, didn't I? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is this is the original one. So he brought it to me. Uh, this guy. He's, I met him on Instagram and he, it's got like this crazy crack in the handle and then it's all um, just patinaed and pitted from, from the years of uh, just sitting. But that's it. And it's really, it's really cool. I remember seeing the original one. I, I remember seeing it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not necessarily something really ornate, but it's definitely old and it was definitely made by hand. It's got like a, it's really convex along the edge. But yeah, you have, to, you have to respect the guys that done those years ago. There's a whole lot of makers that I've seen over the last few years pop up. And there's just, the market's flooded full of knives. Well, you know, I'm uh, an avid collector and um, I flew down to Antigua and drove here right, hours, to, yeah. <laughs> to bring supplies and equipment yeah, yeah. Um, because I really believe in you and your work. Um, and I think that you, your work speaks for itself when somebody can look at it and you can see the, the quality and craftsmanship that are in it. A collector that I met on Instagram decided to come visit me down in Guatemala while he was on vacation. Uh, I just knew he was coming to visit. I didn't anticipate the fact that he would bring me an amazing historical piece to look at and imagine over. And I came across this piece here in this antique shop and it was hidden away. Uh, when I asked if they had a knife in the shop, they said no. And I'm always on the lookout. Uh, for for anything and whenever I go to another country and ask for knives people take one look at me and they're like no 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 knives for you and I'm like uh, but I found this one and then she really didn't want to sell it to me and uh, you know raised up the price a lot on it but here we have this really old uh, colonial Spanish fighting knife uh, that she said has been in Antigua for a very, very long time. And trying to trace the history of any one thing here we know is uh, difficult, right? Um, and, and for something like this, uh, the churches here are oftentimes like three, 400 years old, something like that, right? And so we're talking about maybe in that neighborhood. So we're talking about colonial Spain so Spanish conquistadors here in Antigua carrying this knife around. Um, but then it's all messed up. So what would you do with this knife? First of all, yeah. uh, I wanted you to take a look at it and then... Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, there are parts I need to fill in. Like at one point he asked me, uh, or he says, so what do you think? What do you think you could do with this knife? <laughs> and then the video just goes on with me making the knife because I like I don't know what I'm gonna do with this knife I know that I have it 
and I want to make a copy of it. Back in probably 2015, 2016, I met a guy from Atlanta named John Moulton, and he visited my shop to teach me how to make tongs. And while he was visiting, we made a tool based off of a short clip from a YouTube video of a Japanese swordsmith. He was using some sort of what looked like draw knife to shave steel off of a piece he was making. We took a lot of notes from the video and were able to reproduce our own version of what at the time we were calling a Sendai. And I believe others have used this term too. Uh, it was interesting to me uh, coming down here and you know there's so much ingenuity everywhere and uh, it sort of reminded me of uh, the contrast between when the United States was going to space we spent five million dollars designing a pen that would write upside down yeah. and then the Russians used a pencil yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. and and so uh, sometimes we really get I think make things so complicated that don't necessarily need to be so complicated. Um, but it, it takes skill, right? So, and that seems to be something that's interesting to me about here. Um, you don't have all of the same access to things that you do in the States. And so it really causes you to have to be creative in these ways. But then what you're doing here is really interesting and artistic because um, you're really breaking it down to just the basic, simple components of what it is to be a maker and an artist in this magical place, one of the most magical places on the planet. And, and then here you are making these beautiful things. Um, but how do you do it without all of the fancy stuff that people have in the States? I do have all those fancy tools. <laughs> In fact, I piled them roughly 14 feet high on the back of a dump truck and sent them through Mexico uh, on faith in a, a few dollars. People thought I was crazy, and they still do. The truth is, everyone who tries something different looks crazy, until they don't. So, what's crazier than jettisoning all my equipment into the unknown? Not using it when it gets there. I've been feeling the pull since I started doing this. It's not a better way. It certainly isn't an easier way. But it irrefutably is a way. The harder, less inviting roads often lead to the best views. I'm not implying that bladesmiths had a superior method of making blades or advocating some sort of a staunch approach to making. A friend of mine once shared a piece of advice. Uh, he, he said that you know blacksmiths would use the most advanced uh, tools accessible to them, and that's absolutely right. I, there's nothing I can say to disagree with that, and there are times where that's really applied to my work. But in this particular instance, this is an artistic choice that I'm making. There were no power tools used on it from here down. So um, definitely I used power tools when I did the handle because I uh, really the point for this go round was to do the blade. And then on a whim, I did the guard because it was just so obvious that I could. It, the, this guard is, yeah. is definitely forged and punched. So I, I felt like I might as well, while I had the momentum going. You can't tell what a knife really is about until you hold it, and then once you do, then you know. Like, the person who made it, if they really understood.
I had a piece of brass laying around in my shop. It came from a cylinder of brass given to me by my stepfather. It belonged to his dad and he used it as a bolster when he was beaten on farm equipment. It adds a personal element to me of investment and uh, it does mirror the materials used on the original project, but there is a certain sentimental value now for me attached to this piece. When I made changes on this cool. knife, I tried to improve on the original design instead of just making flourishes for the sake of flourishes. So what's my takeaway? You know, I, I set out on impulse to make the best copy of David's piece that I thought I could. Um, having something so old in my hands that represents a uh, tradition I am, I am so close to. It really stirred something up in me. And I finally got to cash in on my excuse to step a little farther outside the box. And I think it paid off. This project has served as somewhat of a reminder uh, that you can see exponential growth in whatever you do if you can learn to understand the fundamentals of your craft or your discipline enough to transfer them to a completely different tool set. There's a lot more to explore here. Old new stock ideas that need to make their way back into circulation. Do not let the limitations of your tools be a stumbling block. With the right attitude, a sound plan, and a beginner's mind, you can tear down mountains. For now, this point is proven to me, as far as I'm concerned, you know, like, it's definitely... Wow.